What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Nexus Q, the media streaming device from Google with a twist. So let's take a look around and see if it's worth $299. Now the Nexus Q was originally announced at Google I.O. and was priced at $299 and if you pre-ordered it you got it free because Google decided that well this wasn't ready for prime time after all so we're going to give these away to people who pre-ordered them and maybe they can help us improve it. So right now it's in coming soon status on the Google Play Store so maybe by the time you watch this video it will have already been re-released but the real limitation here is that this is a media streaming device that really is only locked down to the Google Play Store so you can't really do things like Netflix you don't have a physical remote you, you have to use an Android device in order for uh, the Nexus Q to be uh, useful so it doesn't work like the Apple TV or the Roku player or many of the other streaming devices this is pretty much locked down to a single ecosystem it also doesn't contain Google Google TV. This is a completely different product which is a little baffling to people because it does seem to have the hardware to uh, support that service. So especially since this is so expensive you would think they would throw every resource Google has into it but unfortunately not. Now what you'll need in order to control your Nexus Q is an Android powered phone or tablet running Android 2.3 or greater and if you have an NFC equipped phone like the Galaxy Nexus or the Nexus 7 you can connect or pair via NFC technology because this has NFC technology built in as well. So and you, of course you'll need Wi-Fi and high speed internet for streaming all that Google Play Store media. So we do have speaker ports on this which is what makes this a standout product. This is very different for most streaming players uh, because this has a 25 watt uh, built-in amplifier so you can directly connect speakers to this device or as I will do connect this directly to my home theater system using micro HDMI so that will connect video and audio. You also have optical audio out if you want to stream your audio that way. Now another interesting factor here is that this was designed and manufactured in the USA which is very unusual for electronic products. This is also the very first Google designed and manufactured product. So although Google has partnered with people like Samsung and Nexus and uh, Asus, uh, this is actually the first product they've engineered and designed in-house. So let's go ahead and slide this out and take a look inside. Alright, so we're just going to cut these tabs here. And lift up the lid, and there is the Nexus Q, which looks a lot like a bocce ball. Uh, very heavy, it weighs about 2 pounds because of that 25 watt amplifier. You can see the packaging is kind of clever as well, designed to protect the spherical nature of this device. You can see it actually has a rubber padding here. Uh, again, interesting packaging. You also have a tab here to lift up. So you should have all of our cables as well. Uh, so we have some literature here. Nexus Q quick start guide, basically on how to set this up. So we're gonna explore this uh, through a physical or actual demo instead of reading it. And then we have our cables. So we have a micro HDMI cable. You can see right there, micro HDMI looks like a micro USB port, but it's not. You also have a power cable, very nicely designed power cable wrapped up very neatly, kind of like the Apple TV cable. And you have important safety instructions. Read the back of this card. Yeah, okay, we got it. So that's all there is to it. And let's take a look at the Nexus Q. So there we have our very heavy plastic sphere. Now the base back here is metal, so you can feel that it is very rigid, very solid metal, very nice construction. On top we have this plastic dial here, which is, which is what you use to increase or decrease volume. You have a little tab here to first unbox, then remove. So this allows us to move that um, dial around. So now we can move that freely. Now on the back we have our banana plug connectors for a set of bookshelf speakers, so left and right. And we also have our optical toss link connector for connecting audio to an AV receiver, for example. You have Ethernet connector, but this is wireless, supports wireless and networking as well. Micro HDMI for connecting this to a television. And you also have a USB port, micro USB port, which is really there for servicing or for hacking, as Google says. And we have our power connector. On the bottom, we have this rubber foot for gripping onto the surface of a table without scratching it, because we do have a metal base just above that. Now the Nexus Q is also really into LED light shows, so you have an LED indicator at the center of the dial here. You also have a row of LEDs around the dial itself, so they will animate and glow as the device is working. 
Now in terms of specs, again, this has a 25 watt amplifier for powering those speakers. We have a Cortex 89 Ti OMAP processor, the 4460 model, uh, which is uh, very similar to the one that's also in the Galaxy Nexus phone. We have one gig of RAM, we have 16 gigs of internal flash storage, and we have other things like NFC technology for pairing this with uh, compatible phones or tablets, and we have Bluetooth as well as wireless end technology. Now if you're connecting this to a television, this is what will be displayed, a whole lot of nothing. So what you have to do is go download the Nexus app. So here's the Nexus app, it's free in the Google Play Store, and it will walk you through the setup process. So let's get started. So it's going to find my devices. So you can see the blue Nexus Q. So we can tap on that. And we can assign the location. I'm just going to say office for now. And so right now I'm actually setting up the Nexus Q so you can actually see a status indicator on the display. In fact, if you look at the device, you can see the LEDs are pulsating now. Now right now it's prompting me to connect my Nexus Q to my network. So I have to type in my password. So now our Nexus Q is all set up complete with a little visualizer and now the app is prompting us to launch any of the Google apps here. So we can play music, we can play movies and TV shows, or we can use YouTube. So let's start with play music. All right, so I've selected a Coldplay song, and here you go, you have a visualizer along with some title information on the display. Now you also notice that the Nexus Q is also streaming in multicolors just like the visualizer. So now I can adjust the volume on the Nexus Q itself, and I can dial all the way down, and I can mute it just by pressing the center toward the LED indicator. And of course I can also do this directly from the app. So I can increase volume on the phone to increase volume on the Nexus Q, and I can control the pause play functionality. So right now you can see that strobing LED effect, multicolor LED effect, but when you touch it to operate it, you can see it turns that solid blue color and it goes back once you're done. Now of course this also works with YouTube, so here we're playing one of my latest videos. Right now we're not connected to the Nexus Q, but if I want to push this to the Nexus Q, all I have to do is press this little icon up here. So you can see I now have a remote control for my Nexus Q. I click play. And there we go. And basically this becomes my remote control so I can scrub it, pause it, play it, and control my volume. Now this also works with Google Play Movie. So if we play a movie here, this is that Transformer movie that came with the Nexus 7. So you can see we lose that strobing LED effect because when you're watching the movie you probably don't want your entertainment center glowing. Now you can also control the Nexus Q from the notification bar. So up here you can see the app. You tap on that brings us right back to where we were and we can pause it or play it. Generally picture quality is very good, it's very solid. There is There tends to be a little lag when you start playing video but it goes away pretty quickly as it catches up. Video is 1080p so it does support 1080p output. Now it's important to remember that unlike AirPlay, the media streaming from the Nexus Q is actually streaming from Google servers. So it's not streaming audio or media from the device you're using, it's streaming from the internet. Now alternatively, you can also use NFC to set up and pair a device. So all you have to do is hold it next to the Nexus Q, it will launch the Nexus Q app, and you're good to go. Now taking a closer look at the Nexus Q app itself, we can see some other options here. So right now you see the Nexus Q devices I have on my network. So right now I just have the one, obviously, uh, which is labeled Office. So if I tap on that, I have some additional controls here. So I can control the brightness of the LEDs on the device. So you can see if I slide it. Back and forth, you can see they get dimmer and brighter. Now you can also change the visualization. So right now the spectrum is the default one, but I can go to warm, which gives you a brighter, a warmer color and also changes the lighting effect on the Nexus Q. So you have lots of options here. I'm not gonna go through all of them. You can have the cooler effect. You have the smoke effect, which gives a very low light more of a white light, and you can turn it off, or you can do track info, so it will display track info at all times. Now, if you go to advanced, you can also change some of the settings here. So you can turn HDMI on, you can turn analog on, you can control your optical settings here, so you can do auto calibration, manual calibration, fixed volume output, 
Uh, you can also do a factory data reset of the device itself and you have some debugging info. Now if you go up to settings, you have some other options here. You can change the name of the network, which the Nexus Q is running right now. You can also toggle whether you want this to be open to guests or not. So you can allow other users to log into your Nexus Q to stream music and video, or you can invite a guest via email. So in conclusion, the Nexus Q is a very interesting design. It's well made and the software works pretty well, but unfortunately it is locked down to the Google ecosystem. So unlike AirPlay, uh, you cannot stream directly from your device. So you can't stream from apps like Netflix. You have to stream from Google services uh, from the internet. So that kind of limits its functionality. So maybe if they make a big shift in how this operates and move it toward that direct streaming process, maybe this will become more useful and perhaps Google is is working on that. But right now, if you can operate entirely within the Google ecosystem, this is actually a pretty interesting product. But otherwise, there are many other media streaming services or media players out there that will do give you a lot more flexibility and a lot more options. So that's going to do for me guys in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.